Hi everyone, it's me, Tom. Welcome to a brand new Trains Are Awesome video. It's safe to say the subject of this video has been on my train bucket list for a very long time. We're in Portland, and the motto of Portland is keep Portland weird. I think nothing about Portland is weirder than its commuter rail system. So let's go check it out. So this is the Beaverton Transit Center, a through station on the blue line, the terminus of the red line. And home to about a billion geese. Beaverton Transit Center is where we will be transferring from Max Light Rail to West Commuter Rail today. If you love train travel, hit that subscribe button. We upload at least once a week and this way you won't miss any of our content. You can also join our community on Patreon. Your support gives you access to cool features such as early video releases. And finally, follow us on our social media, Instagram and TikTok. So to get to West Commuter Rail, you walk through the bus station underneath this little shelter, and then that elevated platform is where the train leaves. So there's some public art on the platform here. And your hot pass is valid. It's a little after 9 in the morning and I've made it to Beaverton Transit Center just in time to catch the last train of the morning. If I had missed this one, I would have had to wait till about 3 in the afternoon. I will tell you more about the system in a little bit. But as the train rolls into view, maybe you can already understand a little bit why I call this system weird. Look at this, it's a single car diesel train. Where else in the States are you gonna ride this? Plus the design is something like I've never seen before. First of all, the front end and the back end have different designs, but I'm so excited to ride this. I've been wanting to do this for a really long time. Time to board West Commuter Rail. By the way, the WES in West Commuter Rail stands for West Side Express Service. It is a rush hour commuter rail service between Beaverton, Oregon and Wilsonville, Oregon. This is what the interior of our Colorado rail car train looks like. As you can see, the cars provide plenty of space for bicycles and wheelchairs. I don't remember if the Wi-Fi worked. I think I forgot to check and they provide face masks. Really makes it Another thing you'll notice is despite this being a commuter train, the rows are only two by two with a very wide aisle. ADA compliant so people with a wheelchair can go through. I think the level step is also a great improvement for most American commuter rails. That is the advantage of a single deck, single car train, is you can create it to be transparent like this, so you can see the whole train. Let's go try out these seats. Oh. I was very impressed with the padding and the comfortability of the seats. Although they do remind me a little bit of the seats you'd find on a long distance coach bus. Oh, and as if these seats weren't comfy enough. Watch what happens when I use that now. 
there's a little bit of a recline. Yes, I could already tell that this was going to be a comfortable 17 minute ride to Tualatin, Oregon. Now, West Commuter Rail extends all the way to Wilsonville, but because this was the last train of the morning, leaving Beaverton Transit Center at 9.08, I had to catch a bus back to Beaverton, and Tualatin was a better option to take a bus than Wilsonville. For the very first section of the route, the train actually runs in the middle of the street. The tracks that we are currently running on belong to the Portland and Western Railroad. In fact, the crew of our train is also P&W Railroad staff. The Portland and Western Railroad owns several tracks throughout the state of Oregon, and they have an agreement with TriMet that they will not run freight trains during the hours of passenger train operation, so during the morning and the evening rush. While on board, I actually saw several of these freight trains waiting for our train to pass. Most of them were carrying lumber. Now let's talk a little bit more about West Commuter Rail. West is a 14 mile long line in the western suburbs of Portland with five stations. The line opened in February 2009, a year behind schedule because these Colorado rail car diesel sets had some issues entering service. These trains themselves are unique, being the very last diesel multiple units that Colorado rail car built before ceasing to exist as a company. Riding a diesel multiple unit in the United States is rare anyways. The only other examples that come to mind are Tex Rail, the Sprinter in Oceanside, California, and the new Aero trains in San Bernardino, California. Another system that comes to mind are the Smart Trains just north of San Francisco, but all of the examples I named above still look very different from these Colorado rail car trains on West Commuter Rail. Americans just like their trains locomotive hauled. There are currently four of these Colorado rail car trains operating on the West Commuter Rail network. Three of them are motorized and one acts as a non-powered control unit. Doors to my left. What does the music give them? Stop is my stop already and I'm sad because I like these trains. While they're certainly rare, they're not entirely unique in the United States. Both the Alaska Railroad and Tri-Rail in Southern Florida run or ran these cars. Now before we leave, let's talk about ridership on West Commuter Rail. Because it is such a short system, it is depressingly low. The daily average ridership on West Commuter Rail is 400 people. To put that into perspective, TriMet's Max Light Rail in Portland carries almost 51,000 people a day and the L in Chicago carries 900,000 people a day. So here the railroad crossings make the horn noise instead of the train. Of railroad crossings. So I knew these types of railroad crossings existed in the States, but I'd never actually seen one before. Also, look at this next feature. You'll notice here that immediately south of the station is a switch, but it doesn't become double track here. Instead, what we have are gauntlet tracks. These are two tracks interlaced with each other that allow some trains to pass the station farther from the platform than other trains. The inner tracks are used by west trains, whereas the outer tracks are used by freight trains so that they don't bump into the side of the platform. That was just another cool bonus on top of my already awesome west commuter rail experience. What I loved about this service was the comfort of the trains, also just the design of the trains. Like, this really is the only place where you can ride one of those. Oh, that's my bus. Oh well, it runs every 15 minutes. Appreciated the staff. Uh, they were very professional and every passenger they asked like, where are they going? And then some people fell asleep and they like helped them get to their destination. And it was overall just a very pleasant experience. Some things I'd improve about West Commuter Rail might be the frequency. I wish it ran all day. 
Um, man, I really love that retro interior and those seats were incredible. This was worth coming to Portland for, just this. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, West Commuter Rail does not run in the midday, so this was the last train. So I'm gonna have to take the bus back to Portland. Um, thanks for watching today. Please subscribe to Trains Are Awesome because we have so many more cool trip reports like this one coming up uh, and you're not gonna wanna miss that. So I'll see you next time. Made it back to Beaverton Transit Center. Man, those seats were hard. But I guess I'm just uh, spoiled by West Commuter Rail. Those seats were amazing.